All right, pulled some stuff off the shelf today. You can tell it's been sitting there for a while. It's pretty dusty. The goal is to take this old ATV winch, get it built onto a frame so it can go on a reese receiver. Um, my goal is to eventually use it, well, wherever I want, but with my dump trailer. Um, as you can see, it's got quite the mess of wires with it. Manual switch for it. Um, it's traveler winch, tractor supply, I believe. And that's the remote that I also have. The remote is not designed to work with this particular winch. As you can see, it's got this big old four prong plug here. That's the receiver for the remote. It did, however, come with this simple wired remote to work with an ATV. The other end of that, get to it. is this much smaller four prong plug. So the goal is get this ripped apart and see what we have to do for wires to figure out which one's power, which one's negative, and then which ones are the in and out signals to go to our solenoid block. All right, before we get too involved, my intention is to test everything out. So I have it all wired up. I know it looks like a mess on the table, but when I press the in button, that should reel the winch in. Alright, that's what we wanted. Everything's functional. Let's see if we can break it. Alright, the old remote's disconnected. I'm going to chop the wire a little ways up, see what color the wires are. I'm hoping that the match between the two remotes kind of steer me in the right direction right off the bat. Alright, let's see what we've got inside the cable. So we've got a four prong plug with two wires in it. So that's interesting. So. We've obviously got the red wire for our power, and then two out, that's it. See how it matches up with the wireless remote. Part of the reason why I cut that as far up as I did was if I decide this doesn't all work, I can splice that all back together. Here's the receiver for the wireless. Also shows four plugs, it's quite a bit heavier. And then instead of a red, I've got a black wire. Let's see what we've got. All right, not surprisingly, it looks like we have four wires in there. You can see a uh, red, a green, a black, and one other one. All green, a red, a black, and a brown. And get the ends stripped and see if we can figure out where they should all go, and then obviously a black. My assumption is the blacks will be able to go together, the red will be a power in, and then my green and brown will be forward and reverse. Let's see if I'm correct. Alright, I found some interesting that even though there's two wires on one side of the remote, there's four on the other side. So I'm still trying to figure out what this is doing. So I've got the wireless receiver wired up here. I've got the power to the power and the ground to the ground. These are, I'm assuming, my in and out wires. So I wanted to confirm that. So right now I'm not pressing anything. Pressing the green wire, I hit out. Voltage climbs. Brown wire, I hit in same thing. Conversely, if I hit out, nothing happens. Likewise with the green. So I confirm that green is my out and brown is my in. So now to figure out where it needs to go on this to send the correct signals.
All right, so this little Phillips head screw that's right here on the table came out right here. And then there was this little clasp here on the back side. Magnetic screwdriver. Um, that exposed my four wires. I had a suspicion that my red's going to be hot. Black's going to be my ground. And then the yellow and green are my in and out. So to confirm that, I'm still hooked up to the negative side of my battery over here. And I'm going to take my positive probe and press it to the hot side. I don't know if I can set this over here where you can see. That's always hot. Black gives me nothing. Yellow gives me nothing. And green gives me nothing. So my plan is that this red wire will wind up getting run to the red wire on the remote. Black will go to the black. And then just figure out where the green and brown need to go and we'll be done. This should be a quick, easy project. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clip off the wires down here. So that way, heaven forbid, I ever decide I need to go back, that plug's still good. I have preloads and heat shrink tubing to go over the whole thing when I'm done. This ground I'm going to keep separate and run it straight to the solenoid. Probably want to wind up having a 3D print a weatherproof case for this. I'm guessing that green and green, even though they're very different shades, will go together and work correctly. Uh, worst case on these two wires is the in will go out and the out will go in. And I'll just have to swap them afterwards. Well, no. Once we're done. Plan on putting some wiring diagrams together to have available too. All right, I don't have the right size connector, so I just have things taped in place for now, just to test to see if I have it correct. If I do, the end will make this go in. All right, well that's a bad sign right there. Oh, helps if I hit the on button. All right, my end is going in. Now it's going out. So we are correct. So, let me run through this real quick. On the receiver block for this particular traveler's solenoid, the yellow wire goes to the brown wire on the remote receiver. Red to red and black to black, and then green to green, even though they're different shades. So that's fairly simple. We now have a wireless winch. Pretty happy with the results on that. We're going to get this tidied up with the correct size connectors, try to weatherproof it a little bit, and that'll do it for this piece of the puzzle. And the next will be to get a mount built for this, or, or not built, but get this on a mount, and then get the solenoid and the receiver connected and everything kind of drive in. I'm pretty sure this is going to get 3D printed. I don't know how else I'm going to keep that out of the elements.